So Wait, hold on real quick, play. but yeah. remember, Russell Simmons rubbing his shoulders, MC Search is running the streets, battling everybody. Where the partners coming at? So, yeah, so that's 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 an interesting story. So, um... Can, can't you tell he's been avoiding that? No, it's not that yeah, I've been avoiding it. I just, right. I just, you didn't, nobody asked. You treat your partner. Why are you man? making I a was face like that? You didn't ask. <laughs> 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 What's that face for, brother? What's that face for? Because you treat your partner's name like Voldemort. He who yeah, shall exactly. not be named. He who shall not be named. He who shall not, not be named. Just, name. I like to keep positive energy around me. All right, right, cool. That's, that's cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You want to answer that, that's fine. So I just, so that's what it is. Right. So I was signed to Rush. Man. As a Rush management, as a solo artist. Right. I was working with an, a producer named Sam Seva at the time. Mm. And I had already recorded four songs. The guy who signed Def Jam to CBS was a guy named Steve Rabowski. And Steve Rabowski went to AM Records to run the entire music division, right? AM was one of the most legendary labels in the history of music. Mm -hmm. They just signed Janet Jackson. They, had, you know, just A and M was they would they would they would have shit. Right. And it was started by Herb Albert, and you know it was just Beast Music label. So this kid from New York who signed Def Jam to Columbia is going out there. I get told by Lior that they're coming out to see me, and that they love the demo and they want to sign me as MC Search. Solo. To a and m but they want to meet me cool but to be totally honest with you i wasn't really in love with the demos that i made there was something missing that just mm. it just wasn't what what was it i don't i can't put my finger on it but it was so evident that i don't even remember the names of the songs or what they sounded like i don't even remember the demos damn but i just know i made four songs and they were coming out to sign me and it was me and a kid out of Houston named Raheem, Prince Raheem out of Houston. Wow. And it was me and him, and one of us was going to get signed as the first artist on a and But because Russell and Lior had already did Def Jam with Rabowski, more than likely I was the guy. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Prince Raheem. Yeah, Prince Raheem. Yeah. No, 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 that's, no, no, no. That's, 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 that's Prince Rakim. That's, that's, that's Prince Rakim. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was I mean, he put out yeah. that solo record. We love you, Rakim. We love you, Rakim. On, on, on Tommy Boy, right? right. That was his first record, yeah. right? Ladies, right? And then Tommy, and right? Fucking right. boy, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. So, the night before, I get a call from Sam, and he says, "Yo, look, you got to come see me." And Sam had a crib on Canal Street. Now, Sam Seva, before I met him. He did five songs for Run DMC on the Tougher Than Leather album. He did Joy Sims. He did Mantronics. Like, he just was a monster. Right. And he said, yo, you got to come see me. I said, why? He said, look, Dante Ross called me last night. He asked me to step up. There was a dude in the studio. Everybody fronted on him. He asked me to come help him. This kid made a, a fucking monster song. And he's also signed to Rush. I just found out. They just signed him. He's your direct competition. So I think you should meet him. Before we go to meet a and and all that, you should meet him. Mm. Okay. So I'm already feeling some type of way about my own music. Mm -hmm. So now he's tapping into my insecurities. Right. Mm. And I'm 20, no, I'm 19 years old, 18 years old, 19. And I had already had two records on the street that I put out independently that did okay so this is, and this is before the battle, by the way. So I go, and my ex-partner's there, and they throw the beat on. Now, pivot real quick. So besides listening to hip hop, my biggest love is alt rock music. I love alternative music. Right. Some of my favorite bands, The Cure, Talking Heads. Mm. But one of my favorite bands was a band out of London called The Smiths. Mm -hmm. Meet is murder, Queen is dead. Like Morrissey, Johnny Marr, like this, like mm -hmm. that level. Um, I go in, he's there with Sam, and they throw on this beat that they did, and this, I hear the the brown 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 brown. 
And I hear him start rhyming, and I'm like, and my mind just goes, and I just wrote, branch of the hip hop tip girls, you don't, we told him go on low showing, you ain't got nobody home. And I was like, yo, let's go. We go into Chunk King, and we recorded three songs right then and there. Mm. By the time they came to see me in the morning, we were already still in the lab. Mm. Still. Still. And Rabowski's there, and he, he's excited to see me. And I said, yeah, listen, uh, I'm not a soloist anymore. We got a group now called Three the Hallway. It's me, this dude, and Sam. And I'm going to play you some song. Mm. And I played him Words of Wisdom, Product of the Environment, and... Product of the Environment was in there? Yeah, original, right? And Triple Stage Darkness. Those were the three. And he was with a guy named Scott Koenig, who was the rock guy. He did Slayer, and he did everything for Def Jam. Great guy. Love Scott. And uh, Steve, he's said it bopping, and, you know, we're just amped. And Steve goes, I don't, I don't know if I get the whole group thing, but let me get back to you. Mm. I said, all right, cool. He leaves. Mm -hmm. We start still recording, because... I mean, Chung King, we had an open studio time. We could just be there wherever. Five minutes later, John King, who runs the studio, goes, okay, you're out. Get out. I said, wait. He goes, yeah, Lior. He said, you're dropped. Get out. And I said, wait, 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 wait what, 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 what? He's like, yep, you just ruined it. Supposedly, you fucked up your deal at A&M. This whole group bullshit. There's no more studio time. You're done. Oh, shit. I run to you rush. Lior. Lior. Yeah. So I run to Rush, 298 Elizabeth Street, because Chung King was right there on Green Street. Mm -hmm. I run over to Rush. Yo, what the fuck's going on? And thick, you know, Israeli Irish. What the fuck is this bullshit with this fucking group? I signed a fucking soloist. You fucking go behind my back. You stab me in the fucking back for this group. Fuck this group. You're fu I fucking quit. You fucking... Yeah. I'm like, man. Wow. Oh, shit. I was dumbfounded. Right. He actually called my mother, Lior. Oh, no. And said, talk some sense into Michael. He just ruined his career. Talk some sense. My mother, mm. when I got home, she goes, Michael, why, what, why can't the other guy be like the side man? You know how Chuck D has flavor? <laughs> like, why can't he? <laughs> and I said, Mom, that's, that's just not how it works. works. We're a group. It's, it, Michael, I'm very disappointed. Lior said you ruined your whole career and you know they're not representing you anymore. So for two and a half years, I was on the street. Oh, wow. And that's wow. the battling. Correct. But but it was that more about sense. being back in the Latin Quarter, dancing, you know, having a good time, hanging out, you know, going to the self-destruction videos and like, mm. you know, being around, being oh, in the shit. scene, you know, and all of that. And then the battle happened, and that's when Russell came back around and said, if anybody asks, you signed the Def Jam. Two, and, it it was, and it was two and a half years later. Did Def Jam exist? Yes. At that time? Yeah. They had yeah. just put out um, LL Cool J, first album, radio. Wow. And they had just put out the BC Boys, License to Ill. So they were the hottest thing smoking. What did, so, what did you do to sustain yourself in those two years? Worked every job. I worked three jobs. So I'd wake up at six o'clock in the morning and I would go to Queens and pick up Yeshiva Boys in my car and drive them to the yeshivas in Rockaway, right? I'd pick up four of them mm -hmm. and I'd make like $150, $200 a week doing that. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go from there to the Hartman Y on B-17th and I drove fruit, food trucks. And I brought food trucks to the five boroughs to the, um, to like the, to like the schools, inner city schools, right? Like daycare centers or whatever. Then I'd come home in enough time on my truck to pick up the kids from yeshiva, take them home mm -hmm. and then I'd come back home and go to the clubs. Mm. Hustle. Wow. And I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep ever. I don't think. I, I remember one time I fell asleep on a Sunday and woke up on a Tuesday. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to serve.